Alrighty, so to demonstrate our problem, you've just come in from Logan, your, your friends have picked you up, you've, you've, you're, you're sitting at the Sumner Tunnel, and you're sitting at the toll system, and, and, and the guy in front pays the toll, the gate goes up, and vroom! <laughs> okay, so this, this is sort of a, the, the automotive analogy of the problem we're trying to solve. If you work for Massport, what could you do to prevent everybody from gunning it? Now, let me just point out that this is not something we're encouraging you to do. Yes, officer, I learned this in lecture. I, you know, <laughs> it was a, a homework assignment. I had to try it out. Okay, so so don't don't try this at home. What Massport should have built, okay, is an escape mechanism. We're going to use two gates. Okay, one in front and one behind. And now, when you pay your toll, the front gate opens. That's fine. This car can go. After that car is gone, we can open a gate and let another one in to pay his toll. And when it's in front of the toll booth, we close the gate behind it, and, and, and so forth and so on. And you can see, using these sort of two strategies, okay, that we, these two gates, we come up with a strategy such that we never run the risk of having this sort of path that makes it all the way through the toll booth. That's exactly the analogy we want. We want a little digital toll booth as our memory element that never lets a cycle develop. There's, there's no, none of this zoom, 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 I hope I close the gate before my input changes because I, I don't want to reflect the latest. I want to sort of go in an orderly sequence and not just sort of zoom through you know, all, a bunch of configurations you know, all at once. Well, people get the idea of the escapement strategy, this, how this two gates actually solves the problem. Um, it, the word escapement is actually the name for a particular little mechanical piece in your watch. So if you actually open up a mechanical watch, right, who, I don't know if anybody here owns a mechanical watch, but if you opened up one in the back, you discover that the gear that's actually connected to the spring itself has this little rocker bar that goes tick, tick, tick. Tick, tick. And it's such that, that it has two teeth that are either catch the gear on one side or, or spin this way and let the gear advance one cog. And so the mechanism that translates the continuous energy of the spring to a bunch of sort of digital uh, movements where the gear advances sort of jerkily one cog at a time, that's the escapement mechanism. And it's, it's, uh, I've just described the toll booth analog of, of that mechanism. Okay, so send our last couple home for the evening. And the key is, is that there's at no time is there a path through both gates. We'll do that here. We're going to use back-to-back -back latches, okay, and we're going to jigger the, the gate signal here in such a way that there's never the time when both latches are open at the same time. Either the master latch is open and the slave latch is closed, Okay, that happens when g is zero. Or the master latch is closed and the slave latch is open. That happens when g is one. Okay, if you're worried about the delay of this inverter, you know, if you're saying, oh, but for a short amount of time, you know, both g and g bar are zero until the inverter changes or something like that, uh, think, of, think about implementing uh, this sort of negative edge, this, you know, this, this negative latch, the latch that responds, you know, with an opposite uh, polarity of a gate, you could just wire up the mux a little differently and come up with something. No inverters need, you know, need to be involved in this. I can design both a positive latch and a negative latch that doesn't have this pesky inverter delay. Okay, so when I say a, when the, another word for the latch being open, the gate being open, is the latch is transparent. In other words, D is being reflected on the, uh, on the Q output after TPD. That's, that's when I say I talk about a transparent latch. That's a latch that's letting information through and is not in storage mode. Okay, so we have a no combinational path through the flip-flop. Okay, and, and we, we should notice that at any given time, either one of the latches in trans, is in transparent mode, the other one is in this meet positive feedback loop mode. So that means that somebody is always remembering something. So we're always in a situation where one of those positive feedback loops is busy remembering. Uh, and then we have this strategy for transferring information from the master to the slave, and that happens on the rising edge of the clock. On the rising edge of this clock signal, the slave latch opens. Information that has been waiting at the star node now finds its way to the output. 
Okay, so the only time the Q output changes, the only time when it will actually transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, if, it, if it's destined to change at all, is right after the rising edge of the clock. Right when the slave latch opens is the only time the Q output changes. So this is, gives us the sense that the, the Q output is changing, is being triggered, the, the so-called register or flip-flop, is being triggered by the rising edge of the clock. We've noticed the instant of time in which the clock rises, and that's when the Q output changes. Everybody sort of get that? So what we've done is we've built a digital escapement mechanism that cleverly allows information, you know, new information to come into the latch, Okay, and at the rising edge of the flip-flop, what that does is it closes the master latch, it goes into memory mode, so it will remember the information that we're trying to, to store now in the, in, 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 the, in the register, and then at the rising edge here, that, that information that just started to be remembered by the master is now transmitted by the slave to the output. Yes, ma'am. So the gate being open and closed is the same thing as being in transparent. So when I say the latch is open, I mean it's transparent. It's letting information through. When I say the latch is closed, it's not letting information through. It's in memory mode. OK. So if I looked at a timing diagram, so we're going to have a new schematic symbol here. So this, this was our symbol, the schematic symbol for, for um, latches. We'll not really be using any latches in the course. We're going to be using this magic thing called a D register, so-called because it has a D input. Um, uh, we're going to sort of come up with a schematic symbol that lets us know that it's an edge triggered device. We, we know it's not actually triggered by the edge, but the Q output changes right after that edge by putting this little triangle here. So typically, if you see this, this sort of little pointy triangle right next to an input, it means that it's an edge triggered input. It's that the the device uh, behaves as if it's the edge that matters, okay, uh, on this particular input signal. You can see that in this diagram here, Q only changes when the clock, right after the clock changes. Okay, even though D is wiggling up and down and the middle node is wiggling up and down, the Q node will only change shortly after the rising clock edge. And you should look at this diagram to sort of see how, you know, it's the value of D, okay, at the moment the clock goes high that becomes the next value of Q. So you can think of the register at the rising clock edge, it's sampling the D value, and that becomes the thing the re register will now output for the rest of the cycle until we get another rising edge on the clock signal. And the clock signal is often periodic. And the, when you talk about a processor that has a gigahertz clock, you're, we're talking about the frequency of these rising edges. So every billionth of a second or so for a gigahertz processor.